Welcome to the Mystic Media Channel. I'm your host, Rabina Rastavan, a.k.a. The Real Astrologer. And tonight, I'm going to get into part three and the final part of Michael Jackson, The Man in the Broken Mirror. But before I get started, um, I just have a few updates. So uh, I know some of you guys have been waiting for the Dark Sided Sagittarius female video. That's coming soon. Um, I hope to have that uh, uploaded by next week, so please be patient, and thank you for being patient already. And also, I wanted to tell you guys about my new radio show. It's a blog talk radio show called the Ace of Cups Radio Show. And basically, it's a platform that has been given to me from uh, my good friend Yusiku. He uh, is a producer of the Ringing Stone Network. It's a blog talk radio show. So my Ace of Cups radio show is a part of the Ringing Stone Network radio show. And I'm throwing up a little uh, a little flyer that I created. So basically, uh, it's the Ace of Cups radio show, Metaphysical Knowledge and Wisdom from a Woman's Perspective. It's a two-hour interactive broadcast dedicated to sharing and exchanging metaphysical knowledge and wisdom in order to bring forth more understanding on an individual and also a collective level. So topics will center on metaphysical arts and sciences such as astrology, numerology, tarot, folk magic, etc. So I'm the host of the show and I'll be bringing on guests, uh, different astrologers, numerologists, what have you. So uh, please feel free to tune in and in the second hour of each episode, I will be giving free mini readings. So if somebody would like a free mini reading, and if I can't get to you with the monthly giveaway, uh, call in in the second hour and I'll see if I, you can uh, get that free reading from me. Okay, so let's get into Michael Jackson. So for part three, I wanted to delve deeper into his sexuality and his sexual profile and really uh, dissect it and see if he really had the potential to do what he was accused of doing, which is sexually molesting those boys that were in his care. So as I talked about in, his, in the previous two videos, I mentioned that his Mars is at the 22nd degree of Taurus, so that could deal with someone who's very sensual but also one that has weird or odd sensual appetites. Also, the 22nd degree is about either controlling or be controlled. It's a degree of submission and caution. So the 22nd degree and the number 22 is one of the more challenging numbers to deal with. Oftentimes, there's a, a severe imbalance of power at work. He also had Mars square Mercury, Mars square Venus. Uh, Mars squared Venus uh, dealt with him not really being able to relate to women and not really being able to have a traditional relationship. Also, Mars squared Mercury could deal with uh, being hypersexual. Basically, it's on your mind a lot. Uh, he had his south node in Aries. I mentioned the south node in Aries can make one very sexual as a result of past lives of being a hypersexual person. His south node in Aries is opposing Jupiter. It's making a sextile to Chiron and a trine to his Mercury. So opposing Jupiter can deal with the lawsuits that he uh, got caught up in as a result of his uh, indiscriminate activities. And also uh, the sextile Chiron can deal with getting special favors or uh, him, him being the exception to the rule. Because I mentioned with Chiron, a lot of times you want to be the exception to the rule. Also with trying Mercury, that put him in a, a position to uh, be around a bunch of young um, boys or males. Also, his arrows, which deals with one's sexuality, eroticism, what turns you on, is at four degrees Aries. So I mentioned in 22nd degree, that breaks down to four. Four is another uh, degree that could deal with things that are weird or alternative lifestyles, alternative sexuality. It can also be a degree of homosexuality. So the fact that his arrows is in Aries can deal with him being attracted to males. Now his arrows is retrograde, which means that he may have a hidden agenda at work or he may not be totally upfront about what he's really attracted to. Now, he also had the asteroid Amor, which deals with uh, of, of affection or, you know, someone that you, you know, have admiration for a love interest. He had his Amor at 13 degrees Leo and it was conjoined to Uranus. So Leo is the sign of children and Uranus, again, it relates to four and the number 22. 
and that can deal with alternative lifestyles. It, Uranus can also deal with homosexuality. It can also deal with that which is perverse. He had Apollo, the asteroid Apollo, conjoined to his son. Now, I mentioned before with another celebrity that Apollo can deal with being hard-headed, always hitting your head against the same brick wall, never learning your lessons. So doing something again and again, even though you know that it's going to get into get you into trouble, excuse me. Oh, actually, let me stop. I'm kind of wired right now because I got a lot going on this week. So please bear with me if I keep on tripping over my words. But yeah, I got a lot going on this week. But for the most part, it's positive. And Mercury is turning direct tomorrow. So I'm happy about that. Moving along. Um, so I mentioned Apollo can join to his son being hard headed. And the son can represent children. But it could just represent his identity, you know, as well. Apollo can also deal with uh, being controlled, so that could deal with his relationship with his father as well. Uh, he also had Juno conjoined to his son. Now, Juno is an asteroid that can deal with uh, the bone of contention when it comes to personal relationships. So whether it's marriage, whether it's a long-term relationship, whether it's a fling. Juno deals with what you find that is usually wrong or the main challenge in a relationship. So with his Juno being right conjoined to his son, again, like I said, the son can deal with children. And also, the son deals with power. So again, going back to that 22nd degree of Mars, that control or be controlled. So with Juno being conjoined to his son, again, it deals with that whole imbalance of power with respect to personal relationships. Now, he also had his Mercury, Venus, and Uranus all in Leo. So he had a stellium in Leo, and Leo is the sign of children. And Michael Jackson did come across as very childlike at times, and it was often said that he often wanted to reclaim his youth. He did that through the Neverland Ranch and basically hanging around with children. So all of that Leo energy, you know, reinforces his love for children, his need to be around children, and basically, him basically having the mentality of a child. Now, moving along, he had Cupid, which can deal with an object of your affection, opposing his ascendant, if his birth time is correct. And I believe it is. So that can deal with getting caught up in lawsuits again, because the seventh house can deal with lawsuits, or it could deal with your opponents, but it can also deal with personal relationships. So Cupid opposing his ascendant, with Cupid being in Virgo, that could deal with him mentoring youth, but getting in trouble as a result of it, or ending up getting lawsuits as a result of it. And with his ascendant being in Pisces, that can deal with him having a secret in nature, him being deceptive, him basically giving off an illusion that he's really just, you know, helping these boys, but he has a hidden agenda at work. Also, let's see. So that's basically it about his sexuality. So my assessment is that he definitely had the potential to be guilty of those allegations. Now, did he actually engage in that? I can't say for sure. I would really have to delve into tarot and do a horary chart to really see, you know, because the natal chart just shows potential. It doesn't show what actually is going to occur, but it shows the possibility and it shows potential and it shows what one is prone to do or what is prone, what one is prone to be engaged in. So the possibility is definitely there and it's definitely strong and dominant in Michael Jackson's chart. He definitely had alter alternative sexual uh, appetites. Um, definitely on the weird side, even on the uh, perverse end. Now, to close this out, I just wanted to get into Michael Jackson's skin pigmentation issue because I looked at some of the comments and I know um, there's, you know, a lot of debate about whether he really had vitiligo and what, or, you know, whether he just lightened his skin. So when I look deeper into his chart, namely his asteroids, I started to see that possibly he really did have vitiligo. Now, I was of the mindset that he didn't have vitiligo and he was just using that as an excuse. But when I do my astrological work, I have to be very objective. So I was really looking at it through an objective lens. And he had several 
elements in his chart that can point to a skin disorder such as vitiligo. And vitiligo is a skin disorder that causes the immune system to destroy melanocytes. Melanocytes are the skin cells that create pigmentation. So he had arachne, it's an asteroid, at the 12th degree of Capricorn. The 12th degree is a hard degree as well. It's sacrifice victim. It's a degree that can um, deal with being victimized or feeling like you're on the losing end or where you have to make some type of sacrifice. So the 12th degree often is a very unhappy degree. Um, it can be a degree of sorrow even. However, it can be a degree where you overcome your challenges. Now Capricorn deals with the skin. So with his arachne at 12 degrees of Capricorn, arachne deals with basically a web of intrigue or a web of trouble or a web of deceit or a web of dysfunction that keeps on compounding, just like a spider keeps on spinning a web. Arachne deals with spiders. Um, so just like a spider keeps on weaving a web and weaves webs on top of webs and just gets, keeps getting bigger. So that's the sign right there. And it was in contraparallel to Saturn. Now Saturn can deal with death and it can deal with limitation and restriction and depletion. So like I said, vitiligo is about the destruction or depletion of melanocytes and Capricorn deals with the skin. So I feel like that configuration reinforces the theme of vitiligo. He also had the asteroid Isis in contraparallel to his Chiron in Aquarius. Now what's interesting about Aquarius is Aquarius is the sign of light skin, very pale skin, and it's the sign of albinism. So Chiron is an asteroid that could deal with things that are odd or things that are unusual. It can also deal with wounds. Now the asteroid Isis deals with that which is scattered. It could deal with a separation or disorganization. So go back to his skin cells that, you know, uh, make up the pigment, the melanocytes. That Isis can scatter things, make things um, haphazard. Just think about the uh, myth of Isis where Osiris got chopped down and all his body parts were strewn around. This is where this uh, mytho the mythology is tied in with the asteroid Isis. So all she found at the end of the day was his penis. So that's why the whole phallic worship came about. But basically the bottom line is Isis deals with that which is scattered. So that could deal with a scattering where his skin, the brown part of his skin looks scattered or where he had scattered white uh, blotches. Now, with Isis and Contra parallel to Chiron and Aquarius, that can also deal with him turning lemons into lemonade, just like how Isis found Osiris' penis and she celebrated that and revered it. So she turned lemons into lemonade by empowering that penis that was uh, separated from the rest of his body and basically uh, using that as a power symbol. So instead, I believe that instead of him going the other route and just using makeup to color his skin or to conceal the vitiligo patches, he decided to just go pure albino and kept lightening his skin in order to make it balanced. Now, uh, also, uh, he had Capricorn on his 11th house cut. That's the house of hopes and goals. That's if his birth time is correct, and Capricorn deals with the skin, so that could deal with him always hoping that he could get his prob the issue with his skin under control. The 11th house is akin to Aquarius, so again, it could deal with the lightening of the skin, a goal to lighten your skin. Your skin was already breaking down, Isis, and, um, and then that whole uh, parallel with Saturn and um, the Arachne. So yeah, like I said, astrology is deep, it's life. You can find out a lot, especially through asteroids. He also had Chiron in Aquarius in his 12th house, as if his birth time is correct. Um, 12th house can deal with illness. It can deal with hereditary disorders. It can deal with karma. And it was opposing the stellium in Leo in his 6th house. 6th house can deal with your health. And oftentimes, if your 6th house is jacked up like Michael Jackson's uh, was, then oftentimes your immune system is weak or compromised or you might end up with a lot of illnesses, and it seemed like Michael Jackson definitely had a slew of illnesses. So that's basically my take on Michael Jackson to close out Virgo season. Libra season's coming up, yay! Virgo season is always kind of difficult for me because Virgo is in my eighth house and it's intercepted. That's an astrological term. Don't really worry about that. But intercepted signs definitely, um, they have a harder time expressing that energy. So when Virgo season comes along, 
it's often kind of tough for me, but I'm moving out of it. We're all moving out of it. Hope you enjoyed this Virgo season. Hope you got through Mercury retrograde. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Peace and blessings.